What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews. You name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku. As well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. Show going to Petersburg, Virginia to talk to Lonnie Blow, Virginia State Trojans out of Seattle, Coach Blow to talk to you, man. Good to talk to you too, man. I appreciate the opportunity. Yes, sir. Coach, I can you believe you've been at Virginia State going almost on your going into your 10th year, man. And this business, which you and I both know, coaches are gone two or three years. You've been here 10. So, right. so how right. does it feel, man, being here this long, man? It does, man. You know, it, you know, actually, um, you know, the time went by pretty fast. You know, they say that, you know, time flies when you're having fun. So, you know, I think I've been having some fun here, and that's always a good thing. So, you know, the time has went pretty quickly, but I'm um, definitely enjoying it. Yes, sir. And, Coach, what was the key to longevity in this business, man, for a stay like you have been here going into your team season? And what's the key to longevity? You know, I know the administration and AD and the right. fan base, but let's talk about just the key to longevity. But those who listen out here who don't understand about how it is to build something, and I can right. build this Virginia State. Yeah, um, you know, you're uh, that's a really good question. You know, I, I think one of the keys to it is, 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 it's like you just said, you got to kind of build something from the ground up. You got to kind of make sure the foundation's solid and, you know, you want to, you know, build a program, not just have a team. You know, anybody can have a team and, you know, you know, win here and there, but you want to kind of build something that's sustainable. And, you know, once you can kind of you know, create a culture in your program, it kind of helps the program from year to year. You know, you hopefully that the guys in your program are enjoying themselves and, 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 and growing and progressing as they, as, as they go. But, you know, those guys end up being sometimes your best recruiters because if they have a good time and, you know, and, and, and they experience a good a, a good thing in, in your program, they'll go out and tell other guys about it. So I think that just having the stability to, to, to build a solid program and, and be able to maintain it year after year with your with your culture is, is really important. And Coach Blow, as you and I both know, and especially with the way the portal is and the way yeah. the NIL is, leadership building is so key more than ever. You know, I feel like guys like you have to 
we recruit your guys every year uh -huh. now, basically, with, right. with, with the portal and things of that nature. So, so how was that being with the changing the landscape, having to kind of even be more hands on, be more relationship to do with your guys now because of how the, so the system is with the portal and the NIL money that's, that's, that's above you guys? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely changed, man. It's really different. It's really different. And you know, these days, like you said, you got to really establish that rapport with all of your all of your young men, and again, try to make sure you you know you're here for them and things like that. Uh, because again, with the transfer transfer system and the portal being what it is now, you know, guys are jumping around from school to school and going here and there. But you know, at the end of the day, we want people that want to be here. You know, if, if, if you want to go somewhere else and that's where your heart is, I think you should go there. You know, uh, the people that we want here are people that genuinely want to be here. And I think that, you know, once you've got the people that want to be here, you can kind of move forward in a positive direction. And, um, you know, definitely the landscape has changed and we got to make sure we take care of our of our guys again, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually and everything else. And I just think you got to be here for them and you got to make sure that you kind of do your best to give them what they need. And coach, on the flip side, it's like you're getting a better high school player because with the COVID year, mm -hmm. guys still in the system. They wait right. guys want JUCOs a little older, want guys who you know a little older. It's like you're getting able to catch a good high school player. What might they usually get because they want to get taken because where how high school players kind of get overlooked right there with the system being so flooded with so many older guys right now. Yeah, you're absolutely right, man. That's a, that's that's a great point. You know, the system is still. Still has kind of a log jam, you know, with that COVID year, you know, um, you know, almost finished, but still available. So, you know, the high school kids are really getting overlooked and a lot of really good high school players. Um, you know, when years ago, they would have had 10, 15 offers and things like that. But, you know, since the landscape has changed with the transfer portal and all that stuff and the COVID situation, um, you know, a lot of those kids are, are, are struggling to get anything. So you're right. You can. These days, you can, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe get a really good high school player that you probably couldn't have got years ago, because again, you'd have had ten or fifteen offers. But now, those offers have been cut way back, if any. So, uh, you know, if you do play your cards right, you're probably able to sneak in a really good high school kid these days here or there. Yes, coach. I'm asking, yes, coach. Um, in Division Two, I'm aware that you all have ten scholarships correct to spread out. And you know, our D1 has um. 13. So explain the listeners the difference between how that works. You can split them up a little bit when D1, you can't split up scholarships. Can explain if the listeners are here the difference between D1 and D2, how scholarships work so people kind of get, get a feel for, for what it is. Yeah, well, yeah, the, um, Division 2, the maximum you can have is 10, is 10, um, 10 full scholarships. That's the maximum. Uh, you can't have any more than that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, Division 2 is just a little different. Um, it's need-based. It's kind of um, you know, some kids qualify for a lot of, you know, free money, financial aid and different stuff like that. And so you kind of just meet them where they are and kind of make sure you can take care of everybody on your team. Because obviously, you know, if you if you had 10, full, if you, you know, got 10 full scholarships, um, you know, you still got to spread them out. And, and again, some guys need only need a little. They may have academic money. They may have other money that's coming their way. So they won't need as much scholarship money, whereas other guys may not qualify for the academic money, may not qualify for for, for pale as well. And 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 you know one of the main things is out of state tuition. So you got in state tuition is obviously a lot cheaper than out of state tuition. So it's 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 kind of a juggling act. You know, to be honest with you, you got to just kind of uh, see where kids are, see what they need, and kind of meet them there. And again, some kids need a little bit. Because uh, they got to qualify for a lot of stuff, and some kids need a lot, especially if they're out of state. So those kids are going to require more scholarship money. And Coach Blow, um, I love Seattle Double I, I I hate it and move to Baltimore to be honest with you. I'm sure. It's the week, 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 week of my birthday. I can drive okay. to Atlanta, okay. just go up there. <laughs> but but talk, talk about how the, the vibe of Seattle Double is, Coach, and how and how the environment's all these places you all play. And that tournament weekend is one of the top ones I think in the country. Yeah. Somebody that how, how you call this mess who don't understand. No, we got in Atlanta, we got the SIHC, but we we don't yeah. get you all the way we do the CIAA world up there. Right, right. Oh yeah, man. You know, you know, you know all about the CIAA tournament, man. Obviously, it's a you know, it's more than just a basketball tournament. You know, you know, it's, it's, it's traditionally you know many many years. It's been you know a huge event. You know, and. Um, you know, moving into Baltimore, you know, obviously it was a little different. We didn't really know how, you know, things would work out. But, 
you know, being there the last couple of years, you know, it's been great. You know, it's been great. And, and the city of Baltimore has really embraced the tournament. And, um, you know, being there still got the same old excitement. I know the people down in down south and in, in, in the Carolinas and the Charlotte area, are, you know, uh, probably missing it a little bit. But, you know, it's the same kind of feel because they really embraced us up there. And, you know, the basketball is always going to be outstanding. And then you still got the activities and all the events going on around the city. So, you know, CIAA tournament, it, hey man, it is what it is, man. It never disappoints. So it's one of those things that once people go, you know, once or twice, it, it kind of becomes a part of them and they got to try to make it every year. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, Coach. And, Coach, in the league, man, I feel like it's getting better across the board for the coaching and the talent. Talk about right. this every, every night in your league, man, how tough it is no matter where you go, no matter who's what the record is. It's going to be a right. tough night no matter what. Right. Yeah, man, our league is second to none, man. The competition every night is just, um, like you said, you know, there's no easy nights in our league. And wherever you go, if you can win a road game anywhere, uh, you've really done something in this league because, you know, some of the atmospheres are, are jumping, you know, the crowd is right up on you and, you know, you got to be tough to play in this league. You know, I, I tell people all the time, you know, it's it's not for the, for the faint of heart, you know, a lot of those, a lot of those gyms you go down to, you know, Johnson C. Smith and Bray Boy or, or playing at Winston-Salem and, you know, those crowds are really into the game or Virginia Union and you know, Elizabeth City, right on down the list, Booty State, you know, Livingstone, you know, they have outstanding crowds. And, you know, when you go in these gyms, you really got to be locked in and focused. And you got to be tough. You got to be tough because it's a lot going on at the same time. And it's an outstanding basketball being played as well. Yes, yes, indeed. Hey, it was, it was, now, Coach, I was be honest with you. But out of Tennessee State, now, I'll be real. I don't care. I'm going to be honest with you. The OVC refs gave us a hard time to try to, to try to, try to you know, neutralize the Gentry Center vibe, the band. And <laughs> we, we had a rough no. <laughs> but at least, in your, at least in your conference, everybody knows the place we sleep in school. So you can't do that to everybody. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> man. <laughs> and OBC coach, we we caught it, boy. It was worse on Saturdays. <laughs> right. <laughs> say, Thursday was Thursday, we gotta get up, maybe get something. But Saturday, the referee, the referee ain't got rules on Saturdays. They was like, nigga, we, we gonna get y'all. <laughs> <laughs> what you say? They kind of had to kind of nullify some of the other stuff that's going on around there, huh? <laughs> yes, well, coach. The, 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 look, our coach side always had called over the office. He was always yeah. like, <laughs> Oh, they're like, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> yeah, man. Sal always talked about that. He really did, man. And uh, did a great job there, though, man. Outstanding job, though, man. Just was fun to watch and stuff like that. But um, you get in these leagues, man, again, you got to – every day you got to bring it, man. That's the best part about it, though, you know, the competition level. You know, you want to compete at a high level. and You want to compete uh, night in and night out. So, uh, you know, I know, I know OVC was tough for you all, man, but – you know, you still found a way to get some stuff done, and that's the major thing. Yeah, it's it, look. It, we always say it because we play five on eight, even at home. <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff, yeah, man. Look, even at home, we was like we played five on eight. We, we had to, we had to out keep the whistle. I beat the. We all say it was like one, two, three, beat the whistle. That was one of our one of our breaking huddles for real. Right, right, that's good. Two, three beat the whistle. <laughs> that's good stuff, man. Good stuff. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. And you know, hey, Coach, man, let me ask this, man, for you. At, at what point did you decide you want to get, get into coaching? You know, my father is a coach. He's mm -hmm. 85 years old here on Saturday. You know, I see our father's our, our, our day, guys texting, he's going to their weddings, I'm taking baby showers with players. So, for you, Coach, what kind of way, what got you to want to be a, become a coach? And kind of what, what is your whole why of it in this industry to help young men? You know, um, you know, growing up, I, I I was really heavy into sports as a young kid, and so um, you know, I I I knew very early in life that coaching was something that I want to do because again, I I looked at sports a little differently. You know, I I, I was always a person that kind of was interested in running plays and how plays worked, whether it was football, basketball, or just the ends of baseball or the ins and outs of other sports and the detail parts of it. So even as a young kid, um, you know, I didn't have a whole lot. So I kind of threw myself into athletics. And um, just uh, at a young age, I began to kind of learn not just to plan it, 
but I learned of why, you know, and, and, and why coaches did what they did and, and why things worked, so to speak. And so as a young, at a young age, um, I started looking at, you know, just the organization of it, you know, how, how the football plays were being run, whether it was a sweep or a dive or a pass play or, 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 you know, just getting into what was needed, so to speak. And the same thing on the court in basketball. So as I got older and I started playing, I, you know, I, I knew that one day that I had the mind for it, you know, because I started so young in two sports. And um, so once the ball stopped bouncing for me, I knew that, you know, that was probably where I was headed because I, um, when I was a player, I, I, I was one of the leaders and kind of a coach on the floor also because I, I felt like I knew a lot about what was going on. So uh, it was kind of a natural progression, um, you know, as I finished uh, playing, I just kind of gradually, you know, you know, ended up going into it, started off coaching at the high school level um, at JV and just kind of progressed from there to varsity. And then I uh, always knew I wanted to be a college coach. And uh, when my opportunity came, I kind of took it and ran with it. Hey, Coach, let me ask you this, man. Um, how has the game changed, in your opinion? You know, I, I played 04 to 08, but it, it's changed even from then. So how has the game changed in your, of your career and how you had to, had to adapt and adjust your schemes as the game has changed? Yeah, um, you know, <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know if the game has changed as much as people have changed. You know, I, I just think the way that people approach the game has changed. Um, you know, it's a lot of obviously the game itself has changed with more wide open play, more three point shooting, um, you know, and things like that. But, you know, the thing for me that you know, especially over the past, you know, recent years is, you know, I, I you know, basketball is a love of mine. I have a passion for it. So um, I, I just see the, the, I just see it trying to become too individualized, you know, as a team sport, I think it's the ultimate team sport, you know, but I just think the too much one-on-one -on -one and selfishness is trying to, you know, creep itself into the game. Uh, but basketball is a game of fundamentals. Uh, and, and it'll always be a game of fundamentals. It'll always be a team game. Uh, now you got, you know, one-on-one -on -one leagues and things like that. Well, playing one-on-one, -on -one, I don't know if that's really basketball. You know, basketball is a team sport where the ball has to move and rebound and box out and defend and, you know, assist and the whole nine. But, um, you know, I just think that, you know, this whole thing is trending, you know, in a, in a direction towards um, just selfishness. You know, guys, you know, wanting to, wanting to get big numbers and they see the sports center, so-and-so scored 50 tonight or 60 tonight and, I just think that, you know, basketball is about winning. You know, it's about winning more so than anything else. And I just think that teams win. You know, individuals are not going to win in a basketball game. You know, I think that teams win. And, uh, you know, as an old school coach who's been doing this a long time, you know, the fun is in the team. You know, and I, I talk to young people a lot about throwing themselves into the team because the team's going to have success. You know, if you want individual success and that's what you're going to harp on, well, sometimes that's going to be tough. But if the team's going to be successful most of the time, then you can throw yourself in that and kind of enjoy yourself more because of the team's success and not just kind of get caught up in your own personal success. And that's the problem with the Atlanta Hawks, and I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Problem with Atlanta Hawks, man. And, you know, gotcha. watching the series with the Hawks and Celtics coach, it was like, I'm going to be honest, it was like, Trey, DeJounte, your turn, my turn. Yeah, man. Taylor and Brown, yeah. your yeah. turn, my turn. And right. four games, Taylor and Brown, right. your turn, my turn. Right, man. That's right, man. So, right, so man. like, that's why I like watching Denver and Miami. Yes. Even though yes. Butler is their main thing, Spolster makes them run in real actions where they have to, right. share, have to share the ball. You know, right. Denver, they run real actions. Unfortunately, right. in Boston, and in Atlanta or Philadelphia, it's either either Harden or Embiid. You're right. you can do it for the Premier or Embiid in the post. So I right. can say it's hard to watch that. Now while it's pushed spread out, it's still just hey, we just waiting out to get you, let you isolate your matchup. And if they double you, <laughs> we're gonna get an open shot in rotation. So it's like right. here's the NBA guy who covers it every day. It's like I pretty much can write my article before the game starts. I know right. what <laughs> That's a, yeah, that's unfortunate, man. You do see a lot of that, man. You see a lot of, uh, you know, basically, I call it kind of star power, you know, where they want the, they want the stars to kind of take most of the shots and kind of do all the stuff. But it's tough to win like that, man. I'm, I'm just sorry. It's tough to win if you've got two, two dominant scores, 
I mean, that's good, but it's kind of, if that's all you've got is two, it's kind of, kind of key on those two you know pretty much to whereas if you've got five or the ball moves and sharing the ball like you talked about Denver and Miami just tougher to guard tougher to guard because those contributions are coming from all over the floor you know if you can like key in on a couple guys and just contain them you're not gonna stop them because they're good if you can just contain those couple guys um you know those guys have got to realize that they got to incorporate their teammate like the Joker does and, and and Jamal Murray did. You know the game where they both had had ten assists and they're in the leading scores as well. They're not gonna win that game if they if their best players they both have ten assists and they're scoring. It's gonna be tough for you to beat them. And I just think that you know basketball has always been a team sport, like I said. And um, you know we've tried to coach well-rounded teams and balanced teams and teams that you know got some guys that. You can't really just key on one guy. You just can't key on two guys because uh, it's just a thing of beauty, man, when the ball moves, when players move, and that thing is just shared. And it's almost like an orchestra, man. And so when it's, basketball's played the right way, man, it's a thing of beauty. Yes, you got that right, Coach. I, I, so I wholeheartedly agree with you, Coach. And I want to ask you, Coach, before we – I got two more, two more for you. Who are some guys we should look out for on your team this year? You're really excited about seeing this year what they're going to contribute to your team this year if you all try to win that CIAA title once more. Oh wow, we've uh, we've got a we've got a um, we've got a large group of guys we've brought in. We've got some returners from last year's team as well. So I think we've got a nice mix of new guys and older guys as well. But um, you know we we. We plan on being balanced once again. Uh, one of the guys that's going to really help us a lot is uh, big kid Tyreek Williams. He set out this past year. He was coming off an injury. Um, you know, he's about 6'9", 245, 250. We're expecting Tyreek to have a have a really good year for us. Um, you know, he lost a lot of weight and kind of got his body in shape. But So he's really, you know, he's really ready to go. Also, another kid who averaged about 10 points for us last year, Tremere Brown, real athletic post kid, about 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, uh, we're expecting some 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 big things out of him also. Uh, if he can come back and, you know, kind of, you know, improve on the year he had last year, he's going to give us a chance to to be really good inside again. And uh, we got some really good guards as well. Got some transfers that, that we think is going to be really special for us. Uh, one kid is Chris Hill. He's transferring in from St. Augustine's University. And, you know, he's played some college basketball in the past. And you know, he's, he's coming in as a grad student. Uh, but but obviously he's got two years to play also because he gets that COVID year back. So he's got a lot of experience and, you know, we need that experience coming into CIAA, you know, nothing like CIAA experience. You know, you can come from some other leagues and division one or wherever you want to come from, you know, when you get to our league, you're in for, you know, in for awakening. And so the more CIAA experience I think you have, um, you know, I think the better your chances are because we do have a tough league and, until you've done it in our league, it's kind of hard to do it. Coach, I'm curious. I want to ask you about how does non-conference scheduling goes in D2? I know in D1, they they, they buy you or you play MTEs <laughs> or kind of right. So how does it go in, in D2 non-conference-wise? You're not in CIAA mm-hmm. play, play. Yeah, good question. Good question. Uh, non-conference, you know, obviously we have our 16 conference games. In our league, we have our 16 conference games. So we have to go out and find, you know, basically 10 non-conference games. And, um, you know, we try to get them regionally, uh, meaning in our region, like we have three leagues in our region. Obviously, the CIAA, we're one. Um, the PSAC from Pennsylvania is the other. And the Mountain East from West Virginia is the third. So we try to play games against teams in our region because they count more as far as uh, seeding goes for the NCAA tournament and strength of schedule. So uh, what we do is try to get those if we can. But a lot of times it's just um, – just trying to see who will play, you know. Uh, those other conferences that I mentioned, they don't have as many games to get as we do because they play a double round robin. So sometimes we have to search and find people in the you know, Peach Belt or wherever we can find them, Independence, or whoever we can find to kind of fill out our schedule uh, because we don't play a double round robin. Uh, so it makes it a little tougher to kind of fill out your schedule because you got to find some, you know, about 10 games or so every single year. But um, Vision 2, again, it's uh, – Basically, just beat the bushes, man. See, see who you can kind of come up with on the schedule and try to fill out your uh, non-conference schedule early. But you want to try to play some competitive teams because at the end of the day, you know, if you don't win the conference championship, you want your strength of schedule to be high, um, so you have a chance of, of, of 
possibly getting an at-large bid. Wonderful. So, Coach Blow, it's good talk to you, man. I, I've seen, you too, I, man. I, I, saw, I saw what you've been doing over the years, man. So, I got to get him on the show, man. I, got, I, 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 saw, I saw your work. You know, one of my friends is Sean Walker. He's not coaching. Uh, yeah. But so one of my close friends is Sean Walker. So, you That's know, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, man. So I had to get you on the show. He told me about you just where he's like, yeah, you on your show, man. So uh, I said I will make that happen. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Thanks, man. Tell Sean I said thank you as well. I should wear coach. It was fun, coach. It was really I really enjoyed this. Thanks, me too, man. I really did, man. Anytime, man. I appreciate you, man. Take care of yourself and be safe. Yes, sir. We'll do. All right. Hope to see you down the road. I should. Hey, I, I, you will, coach. Trust me, you will. All right. Take care. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. Well, the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your Radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.